What's up, guys? In the last week or so, there's been a series of 7.0 or greater magnitude earthquakes. I know Taiwan had a major one the other day, Mexico yesterday or today. And, you know, it, it's been looking to me for years now that we're going into one of those cycles of history that I've shown all kinds of firsthand accounts from the past of these cycles where the weather gets all crazy, the jet streams go out of whack, you have severe drought in some areas, you have severe flooding, and you have major earthquakes. And I I don't think these little, you know, 7.0 or, you know, earthquakes are anywhere close to the scale of what has happened in our past. To where when you look into folklore of cultures all around the world and mythology, that say things like that used to be flat plains out there and now it's a range of mountains i mean that scale of just awesome power i've read firsthand accounts of the last majorly destructive event in the neighborhood five to seven hundred years ago they've officially got it dated at 1300s and they say things to the effect of mountains fell in new lakes were formed cities were swallowed up Great chasms opened up and a foul odor, odor came forth that if anybody smelled it, they were dead in 24 hours. These death and rebirth phoenix cycles, for lack of a better term, you can call it grand solar minimum, you can call it, which has problems with that because we have doubled the sunspot count that we should right now. Some would say it's the pole shift. I, I, I don't know the mechanism, but you call it whatever you want. It's a fact, though, that we have these cyclical disaster periods. See my playlists if this is a brand new subject to you. I've done a lot of very extensive research into this subject. But since these big seismic events have been happening, I was watching Dutch since, and he mentioned the Inland Sea, Lake Conibus, that used to be in America that gave out and flooded the whole Grand Canyon, formed the Grand Canyon, and then he says that there's 300 mile star star forts out there we'll talk about that later but in the very first video that i did three years ago i saw something that everybody else was missing i saw a couple people looking at the idea of the old island of california and they were showing this map here and ignoring the fact that there was this big huge lake inland sea over here and when I saw that, I know that these maps are to scale. At that scale, you're talking about a couple hundred mile long lake, an inland sea. I called it a Death Star at the time in my first video. That's no moon, because if there was, in fact, a 200 mile lake up there that gave out, it actually makes a lot of things make a lot of sense, like where the Petrified National Forest is in the American Southwest, the Grand Canyon, everything, the Green River Valley. And even the idea that California was actually an island back then, and then modern day Arizona and all of that desert land out there is a wash. It's it's a scarred, stripped landscape. And then you have all of the quith, cliff dwellings out there from the refugees of this catastrophe, which I'll get into in a minute. And then by two years ago, I had found the geological proof that the lake was exactly where I said it was in my first video and that I've got the geological paperwork to back up my whole claim here. But let me let me show you what's going on here. This all makes perfect sense. In all of the earliest maps of America, they show California as an island and then they show this big, huge inland sea up here. And then the uh, Great North River flowing down to about where modern day Tijuana would be. And you can see from all of the maps, it shows that it's up in the mountains. And if you know the geography of the American West, then you know you're either in the high, you know, Rocky Mountains or the high desert there. And looking at the big picture here, you see that either there was a Great North River and this big, huge, I'm just going to call it Lake Conibus. That's what most maps call it. But it was either still there at the time of the maps or they thought that it was still there. Because here's the deal. If you're down at the delta of the Great North River 
which is modern day Salton Sea area, you are 800 to 1,000 miles away from where that lake is, way up there in the mountains. And, you know, let's just say that the lake was there for thousands of years, and then there was a great catastrophe, and it all got, it, the, the sides of the mountains fell out, and it drained all, all over the place. The people down at the end of the river, they might notice a change in the river, but they still don't know what happened up at that lake that's been there for thousands of years, so they're just going to assume that it's still there. So first, let me show you exactly where that lake is. So the latitude is spot on. We use a different prime meridian now, so the longitudes may be in question, but as far as the latitude goes, all the maps have latitude lines. The equator's where the equator was, the Tropic of Cancer where's on, you know, so forth. But all the maps show it at the exact same latitude. Uh, this may be a little hard for you to read, cock your head to the left a little bit, but that is the 40 degrees latitude mark up in the corner of the map. So this is the 40 degree latitude line, and you see that the lake is at like 41 to 43 degrees of latitude. On another map here, you see it right about 40 degrees going up to 42 and a half but all the maps put it right at that general area. And even if you look at the shape of the lake itself, it's got kind of a little mitten shape to it. This fits in exactly perfect with this area on the map right here. Here is your mitten shaped lake. And then the Great North River flowed down through what's modern day, the Green River Valley. And down below is the Grand Canyon that got dug out with all the water that flowed out. And I've got the geological paper saying that there was, of course, they say it was hundreds of millions of years ago. No, it was five to seven hundred years ago. There was a big inland sea. There was a mountain wall right here, here and here that held all of the water in. And those all gave out right here at the south end. You have what's called the Gates of Lador. It's this massive rift where the mountains were tore apart a awesome rafting area that you have to drive like five hours across this dried out lake bed and when i was there i was up in the it was before i ever knew anything about all of this but i'm driving across there going wow this is a big huge alluvial plain empty lake bed up in the mountains here and then you get down to the end and you have this huge rift in the mountains that begins the, the Green River Valley wash area. Here's the geological survey proving that there was a lake there. Uh, don't berate me for not <laughs> sharing my sources when I'm showing the name of the whole article right on the screen. If you want to look this up, there's the title. Type it in. But in this paper, they discussed the fact that there were several it varied in size from a huge lake to they say that it was smaller at times um we'll, we'll go over we'll look at this side by side with the wind river mountains here in a minute and the enormous size of this lake but there it is there's the geological proof that there was a lake up there and in this study they say that the boundary can be explained by tectonic reorganization of the lake Gasu drainage basin in response to a renewed uplift of the southern wind river mountains uh, it's just a fancy way of saying there's a big earthquake there and an uplift looking at these side by side the red lines here is the wind river mountains that juts down and that's what gave it that mitten looking shape and now look at the size of this thing we're talking about 200 miles of water up in the mountains in a big old inland sea. Doing a little Google Earth tour of this, this is what it looks like to me. And keep in mind, a, a, a seismic event of this side, the ground is going to turn into basically liquid concrete. It's going to be a flowing river of mud. But it looks like to the east, all of this got washed out, probably formed the Missouri River Basin that that river has flipped and snaked and changed course 
for the last 200 years, it's been the hardest river for the Corps of Engineers to try to get under control. Now, to the west, it looks to me like the whole western slope of the Rockies fell off and filled in what used to be the old street of California and, you know, formed the state of Nevada. And this is, you know, all of just the absolute wastelands of the American Southwest. Just to the south of where uh, the gates of Lador here was is actually where you find Dinosaur National Park. And I'll get into that subject in another video. But this is the Green River Valley. It's where you find Arches National Park. It's where the Grand Canyon is. And all of this, in my opinion, it was very clearly formed with water. Also, if you keep going with this idea, all of this mud flood of material flowed down off of the higher mountains in the east towards the west and when it hits the Sierra Nevada it gets jammed up and pours out right here through Los Angeles so right above the Cajon Pass there that's where the high desert starts all of the wastelands and then you have a very different uh, biological diversity over in the California Valley over there um, I can also show you another really cool spot that I found down here in the desert that is obvious carnage. This is part of that wasteland east of Los Angeles. But you have about 75 to 100 feet of, this is all river rock. You know, obviously worn smooth and rounded river rock. And on top of that, then you have another 50 to 75 feet of sandstone. and sedentary, sedentary. I can't say that right now sedimentary rock on top of the river rock below so that all had to have been deposited there obviously after the river rock was already in place and when you look at that on an aerial it looks like there was a big huge bottle body of water there that gave out and washed out so that we're able to see those layers everything for miles around there is just flat desert right here you're able to see down into what's below the surface level it's just all rolling desert hills up there on top of this uh, cliff here also in the green river valley arches national park where you have all these crazy rock formations that they tell you this took billions and billions of years of wind erosion blah 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 the official science of geology uh, 150 years ago or whatever james uh, cuvier uh catastrophism versus uniformitarianism where i lean towards catastrophism where all of this stuff was created by huge events and happened in a short period of time where they teach that everything happens very slowly over millions of years that's uniformitarianism which was uh i believe charles hutton was his name and he was a free bricklayer but if you look at lake powell right now and the water level is dropping down you see that all this stuff was formed underwater what it looks like to me with most of these is like here there was a rock or a tree stump or something sitting up here that was weighting down the mud and sand and that became sandstone while the water washed everything out around it this area is also where you find the petrified forest and what i would say is that there were a bunch of ancient trees down in that lake up there in the river that uh, wood doesn't really decay underwater so it probably sat there and soaked up all kinds of minerals and then after the event happened they all got sun baked out in the desert uh, you know it's got the conditions have to be just right to even get a petrified tree you're never going to find a petrified tree anywhere that you have a des deciduous forest Anyway, when you look at the big picture of all this, it all makes perfect sense to me. It's not something that takes a four-year degree or a four-hour YouTube video. If you just look at the evidence that is there, then it leads you to these conclusions.
and you know there's more to it i I don't feel like keeping going on this one um but all of the cliff dwellings are out there and it fits in perfect that those were the survivor communities of this huge catastrophe and I, I guess really the next logical conclusion would be that there was a star fort there and a small earthquake kind of tweaked it about a degree out of alignment to true north, which set off the free energy machine that caused the huge catastrophe and reset. But instead of like today where, you know, the, the people in power would take all of the best military jets and helicopters and everything like that and all the munitions and everything... And they would take all of that technology to absolutely dominate all of the people that were kind of the refugees of a catastrophe. But instead, what they decided to do was just act like they never had any technology and they invented, you know, steam engine and and they used steam for 100 years to throw everybody off of their free energy stuff that they're hiding that they still haven't broke out yet to this day. But I'm sure everybody else has already had that figured out and was there. Uh, laters.